After previously covering the use of a local storage and the TinyDB component, now it's time to see how to use a cloud storage through the CloudDB component. While both components are very similar in how storage is accessed, either locally or in the cloud, the main difference is in our application. Whenever multiple users need to access the same data, we have to use a cloud storage instead of a local storage on our phone. One of good examples that we will use to demonstrate utilization of a cloud storage is a chat application, which clearly requires interaction of multiple users. Before explaining any details, let's take a peek at a simple chat application that we will build using the CloudDB component. As you can see, there is an input text box that serves dual purpose to post or to join the chat with its submit button. Below, on the left, there is a list of people currently in the chat. At the very top, there are two options, to join or to start a new chat. Finally, at the right, there is a chat display. We will come back to fully demonstrate how this works, but first, let's see how it is built. So, <clears throat> let's check the designer window first. At the top, we organize the input box and its button in a horizontal arrangement. As already stated, this box has a dual purpose and we need to think about giving sufficient hints to the user what is expected to be entered here. The same holds for the list view on the left. There are three actions that the user can execute by pressing fields in this list to join the chat, to start a new chat, or to post. The second list view on the right is exclusively for displaying the chat. And lastly, we inserted the CloudDB component, which is invisible on the screen and is seen and shown here below. This is it. Uh, let's see now how this is all coded in the blocks view. Right, so when we start this uh, app, when the screen initializes, we have to check whether the chat is already going on and who are the people that already joined the chat and what messages were already exchanged. Right? We want to pick all this up and display initially as we start the application. So both uh, list of people and uh, uh, list of chat messages are already stored on the cloud DB and we need to call this cloud and get these values. So notice that uh, JSON syntax is used, meaning that each value has its tag or label. So for the list of people, we use a tag people. For a list of chat messages, we're going to use a tag chat, right? So we go to the cloud to get value, to get the list of people that already joined the chat. Uh, beyond that, we set the hint for the box to chime in, prompting the user to post, right, to make a message to the group. And then we change the text on the button to post, also prompting uh, the user when it presses this uh, button that it's going to post the message. We change the background color for the list on the left to gray, list on the right with the chat is actually posted, it's going to be black. And as I said, we asking for these values for the list of people and the uh, list of the chat messages right here. Now, when we receive the response from the cloud DB, then the next action is going to be triggered when we get this value, right? Cloud DB got value. So what do we do in this case? As I already said, we have two options, right? One option is that we receive the list of people and the other option is to that we receive the list of the chat messages. So that's why we check first if the tag is people, right? If we receive the list of people, what we want to do, we create a new local variable of active, meaning people that are already on the chat, and we're going to precede this list with uh, three fields. One field, one option is going to be for a new chat, the other one to join, and then we're going to separate the list of people with the blank right here. So to this initial list, we're going to add this value right here. The value is actually a list that we retrieved, list of people that we retrieved from the uh, cloud storage. And then finally, 
we're going to set these uh, elements of this list on the left to new chat join blank and the full list of people that are already on the chat. If this tag is not people, that means that we receive the chat messages. Then we're going to go here else and we're going to set the chat elements. This is the list on the right to these messages in reverse order because we want to see the latest message on the top and then in the descending order uh, towards the first message that's going to be on the bottom, right? So let's go back to when we actually pick something on this list on the left, right? As we said, we have three options. One option is to start a new chat. The other one is to join the existing chat. And the third one is to pick a person that's going to be, that would be us, right? That's going to post the message to the ongoing chat. So here, after this picking, we need to consider all these three options, right? This is what is done here. So first we check if we selected the first option, this index one, meaning if we selected a new chat. If we did, we're gonna go and clear everything that was stored under the tag people and under the tag chat. So basically we're gonna start a new. If this is not selected, but we selected the second option, so index two, index two would be to join the chat. Then what we, what we will do, we will change a hint in the text box to enter name. Okay, we're prompting a user to enter the name. And we're going to uh, uh, change the text on the button to join, right? So when you press this join button intuitively, you know that you're going to join this uh, chat under the name that is entered here, right? And then finally, if uh, neither of these two options is selected, that means that we selected the person to post. So in that case, we're right here. We're going to change a hint now to chiming in. And we're going to add the name of the person that is about to post the message. So it's uh, clear that somebody's message is coming in, that is being typed, right? So what else we have here? Uh, when we finally click that button to submit, right, we have two options. We either submitted somebody's name to join the chat or we submitted a message by somebody to be posted into the chat. So here when we, when we initiate this click, right, this is another action that we need to check here whether we are joining the chat or we are already on the chat and posting, right? So this is first what is checked here. Is this submit text is join? That means that we actually entered somebody's name to join the chat. So we're going to go to the cloud and append this name to the already existing list under the tag people, right? Item to add is the name that is selected on this list. This is this one right here. Once we added this name, we're changing the hint and the text box to chime in and to the button to post, we, meaning that now we're getting ready for somebody else to post a message or the person that just joined, right? If this is not, this text was not joined, that means that we actually, by pressing this button, we're actually posting a new message, right? So in that case, we're going here and we're going to append this new message to the list under the tag chat and the way we're going to do this we're going to join the name of the person that's posting column and then the text that is actually entered in the text box the, the actual message so we're going to have a person name column and then the message itself and then we're going to reset the text to blank like after it, the message was entered or the person name was entered and then gonna, we change the hint back to chime in, getting ready for somebody to post, right? And finally, the, the very end is when these values are being added, where we append value to the list, either here or there. After that is done, after the update is done right here, we're going to trigger uh, these two actions, right? So what we're going to do if uh, selection index first is checked to be less than three, 
meaning that we have either started a new chat, this was index 1, or to join the existing chat, which was index 2, remember index 3 is just blank, that means that we need to update the list of people that are on the chat, so that's why we're going to the cloud get value under the tag people, or if this is not the case, if it's not under 3, that means that we uh, selected um, uh, something from the to, to chat to post the chat and we actually need to go and post the chat and which by the way we know to post any in, in any case regardless of which index is selected so basically you see that there is no else here in any case we want to update the chat and we go get a new value of the updated chat and then we'll be posting that uh, on the right list Finally, the last step is to demonstrate how this chat app works uh, as we already showed a sneak peek at the very beginning. So let's get back to the Air Companion on the phone right here on the left. We've seen this before, right? As we enter the chat, we see that Giotto, Sandra and Michelangelo are already there. They exchanged several messages here like uh, I think I'm done. Sandra is asking if there's anybody better than me and Michelangelo is saying Clearly, you haven't seen my work yet, right? So the one who's joining now is uh, Raphael. So he's going to press join button right here. I see that there is an enter name hint and the button join, right? So he's going to type in here Raphael. And he's going to press the button join, right? Now we see there is Raphael here on the list. We updated the list, you know, of uh, everybody that's on this chat. And then let's say Raphael wants to chime in, right? So Raphael is going to select his name. We see the hint changing to chiming in Raphael. And the uh, post text uh, button changed the text to post, right? So Raphael is going to come here in the text box and he's going to write his message right so he's gonna say to response to Michelangelo oh you you had to show off with the last judgment and he's going to pose this as the response to Michelangelo, right? And then, of course, Michelangelo is going to feel that he has to respond back to Raphael. He's going to press right here on his phone, right? Michelangelo is going to press here. And we're all going to see chiming in Michelangelo. We're going to now wait with the great excitement what message he is going to send in response to Raphael and so on so this is basically it I hope you had fun and you can continue uh, improving and upgrading this basic uh, chat application on your own uh, until the next time bye